welcome to Barnett International's webinar, Managing Risks in Outsourced Clinical Trials, Practical Approaches and Tools. Good day. My name is Liz Wool. I am your trainer today. I am the Global Head of Training here at Barnett, and I bring to you today with this webinar 37 years in the healthcare industry with 25 years in clinical research in a variety of roles from a clinical trial management perspective as a research nurse, a CRA, a study manager, GCP compliance, vendor compliance, quality management, and where my passion lies is instructional design and training. Our agenda today for this webinar is as follows. We're going to do an audience poll, find out exactly where you reside, what is your background with vendor management, even risk management, review our learning objectives. Very critical that you as an organization land on a definition for risk. What does the FDA say about managing your vendors and your CROs? What also are risk management framework attributes, a systematic way of approaching identifying risks in outsourced trials, an overview of some risk assessment areas, as well as managing risks, and then we're going to be, be wrapping it up today. We also have provided to you also with this webinar today a number of tools that you have available for you, and I will be referencing those today during our webinar. Our learning objectives today are as follows. We will be describing the attributes of a risk management framework for use in outsourced clinical trials. We will be identifying potential risks associated with outsourced clinical trials, specifically looking at targeted areas, as well as describe the areas for risk management when partnering with the CRO or clinical vendor. And it's very important right now for me to just clarify on this definition. FDA has presented at the Drug Information Association meeting over the years and last few years that a vendor is, can be an independent consultant. It's not necessarily a large CRO or a large supplier or a large vendor. It can be your individual consultants as well. So as we're talking about this topic today, I want you to understand that definition and what it ascribes to. What is risk? Well, let's look at ISO 31000 for risk management principles. ISO stands for the International Standards Organization. They develop standards that span industries. And the reason I'm using the ISO definition is because it has been referenced by the FDA and other regulators in publications, in talks, as well as in newer publications coming out from the Transcelerate Biopharma re regarding risk management, risk-based monitoring, and actually their clinical QMS paper that came out just this year in 2015, published in the GAA journal. So this is, a, this is the reason why we're using this definition, because it's well benchmarked. What are the effects of uncertainty on your objectives? Whether and I say objectives because it could be your protocol, it could be your business or your organization. Risk management comes into any realm that are influenced by internal and external factors which create uncertainty in achieving these objectives, meaning can it happen, can something occur that will keep me from meeting my objectives. Also, the effect of this uncertainty is the risk to the organization's objectives. And it's very important that when you're looking at risk, whatever definition you're using, we're going to be talking about this more, is what's the probability it will occur, the chance, what's the impact, positive or negative impact. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But also, detectability is how will I know that this risk has actually occurred, even though I tried to manage it. Another definition we have here is from the Project Management Institute's Project Management Book of Knowledge. The Project Management Institute is a very well-known organization on a global scale which has standards for project management. Many of you might also be a certified project manager through the PMI. An uncertain event or condition that if it occurs has a positive or negative effect on one or more of our objectives, such as scope, schedule, cost, or quality. And project risk can be defined as this unseen event or activity 
that impacts your outcome. It could be a positive or negative way. I'm going to give you an example of a positive risk in a, in a few moments. And it also is very important to know that known risks are those which you can identify and analyze beforehand such that you can decrease or reduce the likelihood of their occurrence. And you can also plan a risk response in the event the impacted event occurs. We also have something else that we all know very well, an unknown risk. And those are identified, not able to be identified beforehand. Unknown risks are not able to be identified beforehand. Because, as you know, if you're not able to identify them, you cannot analyze them. And of course, you cannot manage them proactively. The causes of risk can come from various sources. I'm going to talk about this in a few moments. We're going to be learning more about internal factors and external factors. And just for right now, some external factors, such as a legal requirement or a regulation like what we work with, could also be conditions in the market, a market change so far as currency exchanges around the globe that impacts your budget. I think a lot of people have lived with that, going with global trials. But also internal factors, such as resourcing, as well as the maturity of your organization in any aspect of the work that you're performing. <clears throat> 